the Joe Rogan experience. But it's interesting to see when there's uh, like such a strong reaction to certain things. And especially amongst like really wild hardcore fans, because there's hardcore like particularly. Trust me, like, I know. Yeah, you, you <laughs> face, well, you also face it because you you cover these genres, you cover these subjects that are that are iconic. Superman, Batman. I mean, just those alone. No, no. And by the way, that's a lifestyle choice for a lot of people. It's not mm -hmm. a movie, right? Right. It's right. not a movie. It's like it's not like if I made a romantic comedy. You'd be like, okay, that was fun. Right. Like, I, the people who love, and, and by the way, I love that they feel this passionately. I'm, I'm not, in no way would I criticize that because I feel I live the same life, right? Because, like, it's, yeah. for me, it's morning, noon, and night. But so for those guys, it's not just a movie. And so you have to, on some, on some level, you have to acknowledge that the, they, this is their religion. You know, and they feel strongly about it. And they, by the way, the truth is, it's my religion too. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a. I, I tend to get in trouble because of my. I, I do take a deconstructivist point of view because of Dark Knight Returns, because of Watchmen. Those, if you've read those two comics, it's hard to go back. Mm. You know, to like yeah. it, you, you want to, and it's because I care that I want to take them apart. Like I want Batman. Like people are always like, well, Batman. I, Batman can't kill, right? So Batman can't kill is canon. And I'm like, okay, well, the first thing I want to do when you say that <laughs> <laughs> is I want to see what happens. And they go like, well, don't put him in a situation where he has to kill someone. I'm like, mm. well, that's just like you're protecting your God in a weird way, right. right? You're making your God irrelevant if he can't be in that situation. He has to now deal with that. Yeah. You know, if he does do that, what does that mean? What is it? What is it? What does it tell you? But does he stand up to it? Can he survive that? Right. As a as a God, as your God, can Batman survive that? I never thought that that was canon, that Batman can't kill. But well, for a it, lot of people, it is. That seems ridiculous, given the circumstances in which he operates. Yeah, well, <laughs> and all the weapons. Don't read that he the has. comments right now. Don't read the comments. Yeah, <laughs> this is like, that this seems is like, ridiculous. It's well, I mean, and you know, there's this huge like. There's, so in Dark Knight Returns, there's a scene where, and I copied it kind of in Batman vs. Superman, where he grabs the M60, he busts through the wall, and he grabs the M60, and he's like, the guy's like, in the comic book, he's like got this kid, the, the mutant has this kid with a gun to his head, and he's like, I'll kill him, I swear I'll do it. And Batman says, I believe you. And he shoots him straight in the head, because... It's like a no-win scenario. It's like the Kobayashi Maru of, you know, the Kobayashi Maru is that in Star Trek, it's that test they put Kirk through where there's a no-win, right? Because they want to see how you'll react, mm. right? So they say, okay, we're gonna make a we're gonna make a scenario, a test scenario where you don't win, where there's no way to win, and in that situation, we find out what you would do in a no-win situation because if you're gonna be the commander of this spaceship, you have to, you're gonna be in situations where you know, it's life or death, and especially when there's no tricking it, right? There's no tricking death in this case. And the famous thing with Captain Kirk is he he went and hacked the machine and made it so there was a a solution. Yeah. And so that was his response to the no win situation was create a scenario where he wins. Which is cool which is a cool character you know, that's a cool character move. But like that's kinda how I felt uh, that's what they would say, don't do that to Batman. Don't put him in a no-win situation because we don't want to see him lose. Like, we can't see him lose. He has to maintain this godlike status. And that's what the cool thing about Frank Miller, Frank Miller said, fuck it. I'm going to, like, I'm going to, I want to see who this guy, like, if, if a guy, so you're saying to me that I've got a gun to this kid's head, you're Batman, I'm going to, there's no move. There's no trick. There's no throwing the batarang. There's no a dust ball to distract me. Like, I've, I've just got to pull the trigger and I kill this kid. So you're saying in that scenario, Batman, what's Batman supposed to do? Right? Right. Yeah. He's going to lay down his gun. What, what's he going to do? Like, it, it's the guy says to him, I'll do it. I swear it. I believe you is perfect. Yeah. I believe you. And I then, believe you. And, yeah. You know, so I'm just like, that's where, like, 
Frank Deacon takes Batman and just tears him in half. Yeah. And you've got to now come out the other side of that. And Batman is still the hero. Batman still does the right thing. He maintains his code. His eth- He doesn't change. But like our perception of him changes. And I think that's like a, that's the, I, I, and I have run afoul of, but, but a lot of the fandom who have, I feel like who have like gotten to the same place I have with the characters where they need to test them to like, and I feel like the characters, it's been my experience that the characters have not let us down. Like these myths have not let us down. They have, They've made, they, they, you put them to the ragged edge into that scenario and they come out the other side and you're like, fuck yeah, there's a reason why Superman is Superman. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a re- like he can handle it. He can fucking take it because he's so iconic. Like you see like the red S, you go anywhere in the world with that Superman t-shirt on anywhere and you say to any kid like, what's this? Su- oh, that's Superman. Yeah, Exactly. Like, you know, that means something. That's, like, fucking cool. Well, not only that, it's one of our first ever superheroes. Literally. Yeah. I mean, s- just think of the name. It's so unoriginal. Superman. <laughs> it's, it's the most... You couldn't think of that today. That's it's not so a, ridiculous. You, can, you can't do that today. I know. If you tried to come up with a Superman today, everybody would shut the Superman? fuck up. Superman? That's horrible. That's your guy? Yeah. yeah. You know? Come yeah. on, man. We've got so many different interesting but characters that's what the, out That's there. why the Trinity, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, are so powerful, because they're mm. literally... Obviously, the origin yeah. <laughs> concept, right? Wonder Woman, literally, yeah. Batman, yeah. Batman is the only anomaly because he's like a Batman. Like, what does that mean? Right. <laughs> like, what does he doesn't even have powers? <laughs> yeah, he's just like a he's half bat. Like, what is that? He's just got a lot of money. Yeah, he's got a lot of money. Yeah, that yeah. was like my favorite thing we did in uh, in um, in Justice League where. Bruce says that line about like when when Flash says like what's your power and he's like I'm rich. <laughs> I always it's thought that was cool. Kind of crazy that no one decided to uh, genetically experiment on a Batman, like make make a Batman, yeah, for another another version of Batman. Like t- take a guy and hit him with some Wolverine juice or whatever yeah. the fuck. And oh, just other turn animals. Him, just turn him into a superhero. Yeah. Instead of have him just be a rich guy, give him some crazy genetic mutation something well, that they do to him that turns him into something but i think that and that, that is the thing I, I mean not to that extent but that's the thing that frank does and that's the reason why i wanted affleck because like to me batman's a big dude right mm-hmm. affleck's six four you know he's like a legit big dude and you know like in the shoes the shoes the boots are like two inches so like he's literally almost like you know six six in the in the costume, mm. like when he comes out in the costume with that little bit of, I mean, we put some muscle on him, and then there's a muscle suit under the suit, and he's like, it's a, he's like, legitimately a scary mm. looking thing, mm. you know. He's just like standing there, and you're like, holy shit, like, dude, the chin is so insane in that cowl, you know. He, yeah, I yeah. mean, look at him. He's like, you know, he's. I took that picture by the way. Um, you know, he's like legitimately. Like that's Batman to me. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't know, like what, you know, because Christian like, Bale was a great Batman. He's as a well. great Batman, but he's still like you know, you know, five ten. Mm. You know, it's 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 cool. I mean, not to be. I'm yeah, not, though, that I'm not does being, mean something. I'm not being rude was about Batman like, giant in the comic books. In, in in some of the like in in Dark Knight Returns and in in Frank's comics and like you know in the classics, he's pretty big dude. You know, he's always been mm-hmm. pretty thick. In Dark Knight Returns, if you look at Dark Knight Returns, you know, like he's there's a line like where he's trying to hold someone's gun and his finger can't get in the trigger guard because he's so big, you know, like like where he's like, you know, I, I like things like that, like where yeah. you're just like, he's like, he has this, this genetic like gift of just being this big fucking dude. And other than that, you know, his parents were murdered in front of him and he's also like a billionaire. So yeah. like that, <laughs> that weird like you, you want it to not be just one of those things, right? Right. You, it needs to be all of them in order for him to really to do what he can do.